my friends are since. Hello, I am here in Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm going to be going to the Nagwon Musical Instrument Arcade, which is apparently one of the biggest instrument marketplaces, as it were. It, not just in Korea, but I think in the world. It's this kind of four-story building filled with a whole host of weird and wonderful shops that have guitars and drums and synthesizers and all that kind of thing. There's a bunch of videos online of people going to the arcade and looking around because it is such an interesting looking place. However, most of them are guitar players and they kind of just run past everything and go, look at all these guitars. And no one from an electronic music uh, kind of bent goes there and looks to see what's actually in stock at these shops. So I'm curious to see what they've got. I've seen mixed reviews about the quality of the stuff at the market and I am going to have to go and see for myself. First of all though, I'm going to go up North Seoul Tower because uh, that's also on my list and it's kind of on the way. So I'm going to walk up there, uh, show you some of the stuff and then we're going to go to the arcade market thing and see what they've got. My understanding is there's a shop on one of the floors that has vintage synthesizer things, which could be dangerous because I don't know how I would get any of that back in my case. But I'm sure if I found something I would find a way. So let's go. Let's fucking, let's go. This is one fucking steep climb, by the way. Good view, but. Why did I decide to do this? There's the tower! Still very fucking far away! This is why I don't do travel vlogs. It would just be me fucking moaning and having to climb up a goddamn hill. I could have got the bus, but no. Too good for the fucking bus. Oh Jesus Christ, I'm gonna die. I'm so fucking unfit. Oh, there's the bus. The view at the top better be fucking incredible. Look at that. Okay, so I guess that was pretty good. It was probably worth the massive trek up this hill. Two problems though. Firstly, I seem to have lost my hat, which I need to control my flowing blonde locks in the wind. So that's annoying. And also, it's now about half four or something, and that marketplace shuts at 7.30, which means that by the time I get there, I'm not gonna have much time. So I'm probably gonna have to go another day. Oh, which is a failure of organisation on my part. This is actually the second time I've tried to go to this arcade market thing. The first time it was shut because it was a Sunday and I didn't check and now I'm too late so... Ugh. Where's my fucking heart? So it's a few days later, I think I've found it. Here is the Musical Instrument Arcade. Uh, it's really a good thing that I didn't go the other day because this place is literally five minutes away from the hotel I'm staying at now. So I guess we'll go in and see what treasures they have. Although, hopefully I don't find any too good because I don't know how I'll fit it in my case. Anyway, let's go, let's see. Oh shit, that's a guitar. No. 
synthesizers. Is that a Korg guitar thing? PA gear. Lots of PA gear. Guitars. Tubas. PA speakers of every fucking type. Drumsticks. I know fuck all about drums. Oh, look at those mics. Yeah. I'm not kidding, by the way. This place is massive. All right. Oh, headphones, lots and lots of headphones. Lots of digital pianos. No synthesizers, really, though, yet. Hmm. Oh, look at all these rack effects. Mixers, EQ. Compressors. Is that Behringer? Patch bays. Any fucking mini jack patch bays? It's interesting. Video gear. Holy shit. Every cable you could imagine. Simon the Magpie told me to look for Miku pedals because they're going for lots of money. I bet if I found one, it's still going for lots of money. More pianos, Casio things, no synthesizers yet. This is massive, let's get everything. Cases, trombones. Oh, here's a sympathy shot. This is all electronic DOS stuff, I think. 
Zum Just when I think I've got to the end, there's even more stuff. I actually lost at the moment. Where the fuck? Ugh. Card up six. I'm in the magpie's dream. There is some cool shit in here. Accordions. I tried to learn to play the accordion once, it didn't go well. Ah, NPC. Synthesizer. Look at that. Some actual Akai SQ10. That's cool as fuck. So as you can probably tell, I'm now back in Scotland in my home studio here and earlier on today I was going through the video footage from the Nagwon Musical Instrument Arcade when I realised that I hadn't actually recorded anything talking about my experience after I visited. So that's what I'm going to do here, just to tie everything up with a neat little bow as it were. Now in total, I think I spent about an hour or so wandering through the corridors across the different floors of the arcade and I have to say that it's actually really impressive that a place like that still exists in 2023. There are so many independent businesses in there from wee tiny shops to repair places to fucking, there's even a rehearsal and recording studio in the kind of bottom floor and that is something that is increasingly uncommon and I've heard that this continued existence of this particular arcade is largely down to the dealers and the creative community that's involved because there have been kind of pushes to redevelop the building and stuff so it's through dogged artistic persistence that is still there and if so that in itself is to be kind of appreciated and you know respected. Now with that said, whilst I can appreciate the value and the role of a hub like that for musical instruments, I have to say that as a visitor I didn't particularly find anything that I found overwhelmingly interesting. Most of the shops deal in new goods and they're largely kind of traditional instrumentation, traditional band instrumentation anyway, like guitars, pianos, horns to some extent, uh, drums and all that kind of thing. If you're an electronic person there isn't a huge amount of options in there. There are some in terms of like DAW controllers or microphones, but really I didn't see anything that stood out to me. Now there were two shops that were interesting or had electronic stuff that were notable. The first was kind of a more modern place. It had things like the Nord pianos, it had an Akai MPC Live, an MPC X and all that kind of thing. But when I went in to have a look, they kind of jumped on me a bit and were like, yes, yes, what is it? What do you want? And so I didn't really particularly feel like I wanted to look around. And to be honest, they also didn't have anything that was all that interesting in terms of modern gear. It tended to be the big names. There wasn't any kind of small modular stuff that I saw. There wasn't any kind of weird boutique or independent manufacturers. So looking at something like Signal Sounds in Glasgow or Perfect Circuit will give you a far better and more interesting range than that place. 
The most interesting place I came across though in the arcade was on one of the upper floors and it was this tiny, tiny wee uh, shop, I guess, which had a whole bunch of different vintage gear. Now, the reason I found this was because it had an Akai ASQ-10, I think, which I believe was the sequencer. And I went in to have a look. The guy had, a, you know, a Pro 1, an MPC 3000, a whole bunch of other Moog gear, which was pretty interesting, but I got the impression that this was more like an office for an online trader as opposed to a shop that you could go in and look about. So it's not like there was piles and piles of stuff in there like you might find in Tokyo, for example. So overall, that was it was a cool place to have a quick look about, but really um, it wasn't somewhere I was going to buy anything. So that's my experience with the Nag One Musical Instrument Arcade. If you like instruments, I think it's worth having a wee wonder about, but I wouldn't go out of your way, particularly if you're more interested in electronica than guitars and things like that. And to be honest, even with the guitars, there wasn't a huge host of weird and really bizarre things like you might find in Japan. So I wouldn't rush to add it to your itinerary. I'm kind of a wee bit disappointed because I hoped I would be able to find some older interesting gear whilst I was in Seoul, but alas, uh, I guess it wasn't to be. I'm glad that I finally actually got to the arcade for myself though because I would have regretted it if I hadn't gone along. And to be honest, it's probably best that I didn't find anything to buy because I really couldn't afford it anyway. If you happen to be from South Korea and you happen to know of other places that might have better gear, uh, then you should have told me weeks ago. However, you can leave a comment below and it might help out other people that are in a similar boat. If you've made it this far in this video, then I have to say I'm quite impressed because this has been a bit of a disorganised, rambling, incoherent pile of pish. And so, to confuse everybody else, you should leave a comment below just saying watermelon. Thanks for watching anyway, and uh, see you later.